name is Onita Castillo and I'm the original designs team leader here at Rogers Gardens. Today we're going to talk about succulent top pumpkins and how to make them. First we're going to talk about how you're going to pick your pumpkin. I like to choose really thick skinned fleshy pumpkins because they last the longest. Your typical jack-o-lantern pumpkin is easier to carve and that's why they're carving pumpkins. But if you want this succulent centerpiece to last a long time, you're really going to want to choose your pumpkin wisely. First you're going to lift it up and make sure that there's no soft spots on the bottom, no um, weeping little holes or anything that's starting to look like signs of rot because that's just going to make this pumpkin not last for you. I also chose this pumpkin because it has great color. I also liked the way that this kind of had not just a flat shape on the top. I like how it goes in and out and that's really going to help me give some dimension to my succulent top arrangement. The stem, normally we would cut off the stem because sometimes it hinders the design, but for the this pumpkin I'm going to use this stem to really prop up some of my succulents and give more dimension. So first I'm going to take our spray tacky spray glue and I use that to glue on the sheet moss. You can use any type of moss, it's just easier sometimes when this is in a sheet because it's easier to apply. But you can use sphagnum moss, Spanish moss, reindeer moss, anything that you really want that really will make your pumpkin pop. So when I'm choosing the moss, I like to kind of first shape it out and make sure that I get in all those crevices. Make sure that you that you shake up your can so that you're gonna get a nice generous spray. And I'm just going to spray all on the top of the pumpkin. Get all those crevices so that this will stay. And then I'm going to lightly press down for about 10 to 15 seconds. This will take to adhere. And I'm gonna go all around the top of my pumpkin this doesn't have to look perfect because when we're done, you won't really see much of the moss, as you can tell in this pumpkin over here. I'm gonna hold that down until it stays. The next part, you're going to use a gel tacky glue. I like this glue because it is non-corrosive and it is non-toxic. So the succulents don't mind being stuck to it. If you use a hot glue, they don't really mind so much, but the pumpkin might get damaged in the process with the heat. So the clear gel tacky glue is really what I like to use. Then I'm gonna use some pruners. I like the really thin needle nose pruners because you can get down into the spaces where you need to get so I don't damage the succulent unnecessarily. I'm going to kind of pull back some of the leaves and I'm going to stick my pruners down at the base of the succulent and cut it clean off from the soil. And then I will remove any damaged or dead or dirt from the bottom. And so I have a nice clean succulent to work with. I'll do this with many types of succulents. I really like echeverias because they have a nice floret shape. Um, I like to use lots of different colors. Things that you might not think that would go together really pop sometimes when you have lights and darks and different textures. So I'm gonna go through and pick some of these succulents and I really like the ones that are also very fleshy and thick because that means they're holding a lot of water. This will help them in their transition from growing in this dirt to now growing on top of this moss. Okay, now that I've got all my succulents cut up, I'm going to start designing. First, I choose the larger pieces for the center to kind of um, build up my arrangement. So I'm gonna take some of these larger echeverias turn them over. I'm going to apply the glue at the base of the stem because this is where the roots are going to grow out of. I want to try not to put too much on the leaves because that will just um, let the, the leaf die off. So once I get a generous amount of glue in there, I'm going to stick it somewhere towards the center. And I'm going to do this with the rest of my large echeverias. And I'll kind of do this as Alternate, alternating colors. As I'm putting these on, they're kind of going to hold themselves up. It's kind of a little bit of a balancing act. 
But once they all get in there nice and snug, they will hold each other together. This glue takes about 24 hours to fully cure. So not moving it around for that first day will help ensure that everything sticks in there. Once I've got all the large florets in there, I'm going to work with some of my taller filler succulents. For our center, we're going to use this Crassula Jade Golem. It's really good and tall and really gets into those small crevices to kind of make your top and center. So I'll glue these in in those crevices in between your large echeverias. Now I'm gonna start with my filler succulents and some of these smaller graptocetums are good for that. I don't need all of these extra leaves around the edges. I really just want that beautiful floret in the center. And if you leave the long stem on, you can always use that as kind of an anchor to hold it in, in place. And then you're just gonna tuck these all the way around so that you have no holes. The more succulents you get in there, the better, because some of this might not make it. When making these succulent top pumpkins, choosing the right succulents is always difficult and it's always a trial and error process. Some things will make it, some won't. You'll find that some like to be on top of a pumpkin and some do not. And that's the same with gardening out in your, your very own garden. It's part of the gardening process and really all about learning. A lot of these small guys kind of drape towards the bottom and fill in so that those kind of hang over. And you wanna make sure that everything is tight in here and go all the way around so that there's a little pop of inspiration on every side. If this is sitting at the center of your table, everybody gets a, def a different view. While I'm working on this, I'm always putting my glue on its side so that it stays near the end of the spout. And that keeps you from going like this the whole time. The great thing about succulents is they are really resilient. They will grow roots around this and into the moss. And then once I've got everything full in there, turn it around, make sure there's no holes in there, make sure everything's tight in there. And now I have my wonderful succulent top pumpkin centerpiece. Once I'm done with my succulents on the arrangement, I like to kind of secure it and make sure that while it's drying, everything kind of stays in place, especially if I'm going to be moving it to another table while it's drying. So I usually take some twine or some raffia and just kind of hold these guys together on the pumpkin, especially when you're working with smaller pumpkins. Sometimes it's a smaller space and everything just needs to stay in there for a little bit. Also for care on your pumpkin, it really the succulents are gonna last a lot longer than your pumpkin. I've heard of people having pumpkins till April. Um, you're literally going to get sick of this pumpkin by the time it's the new year. So afterwards, you can always remove the succulents from the pumpkin by taking off the moss. And all of these succulents will have roots already growing, so you can always plant them in your yard, save them, and this will remind you, oh, I got that succulent from my pumpkin. And then for care, I like to use a spray bottle set on the mister setting. 
And depending on if you have this pumpkin inside your house or outside on a covered patio, you might need more water than other times. When we get into those hot, dry Santa Ana winds, the succulents are gonna take in more moisture. Now that the succulents don't have any roots for right now, they're going to take water in through their leaves. They have little pores called stomata on their leaves, and that's what's going to basically take in the nutrients and water for the next several weeks while they're adjusting to their new home on your pumpkin. So a simple mist every two to three weeks is sufficient unless we're a little bit more dry then you might want to up the water a little bit. Make sure that you're not pouring water into this because then the moss will get really saturated and wet and start to mold. As time goes on, you can always pick off dead leaves that have stuck inside the middle. Don't worry, they'll plump back up and they'll survive and really thrive on your pumpkin. Thank you for joining me in making the succulent top pumpkin arrangement. If you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube videos and follow us on Facebook and Instagram, we'll have more how-tos and how to make your holiday nice and festive here at Rogers Garden.